Okay, I know I missed a week of this, but can you blame me? It's it's not my fault, I tell you. Um, for whatever reason, Avengers No Surrender is actually doing fairly well at the local comic shop level. Uh, it done better than retailers expected for reasons that are sort of mystifying to, I think, a lot of people. Because this is exactly the kind of stuff that people say they don't want. I mean, you've got the $4 price tag. It's a weekly series. Uh, it's another event after they've had so many events in the past two or three years. But it's it's actually doing relatively well at the retailer level. So the two comic shops that I uh, go to that are sort of within easy driving distance, neither one of them had Part 5 last week. So it kind of uh, bummed me out because I, I don't want to... I committed to doing this, and I don't want to look like that I, I tapped or anything. Um... And, but the funny thing is, because I keep saying that in each of these issues, really only one thing happens. It's so decompressed that there was no reason to drag it out over 16 issues. Well, here's the thing, right? So I missed an issue. This is the last issue I have. Uh, part 4, issue number 678. This is the one I've got right now, part 6, number 680. So there was a part 5 in between these. This one ends, spoiler I guess, whatever... With the Human Torch grabbing this pyramid thing and blowing up. This one begins with them realizing that the Human Torch is dead and mourning his loss. I, I like, it literally picks up where the last two, or the other issue, uh, left off two issues ago. So... What the heck could have possibly happened in Part 5? The only thing that... Um, we get is that, or that they mention in this little write-up here, in the front, is that uh, they say they mention the Grandmaster and the Challenger, and I don't know if they had said who Grandmaster's opponent was yet before, so that might be the only new thing. And they keep calling them pyramids, which I don't really know what that's a reference to. But in any case, um, yeah, this issue is just, um. Once again, only one really big thing happens. They open and they're everybody's really sad about Johnny Storm dying, even though, like I said, Johnny Storm died two issues ago. And there's there's some weird things happening, like Red Hulk General Dude mentions that his Hulk formula thing is on the fritz. Um, and then Wanda, Sunspot, and... Uh, Brother Voodoo, who they're calling Dr. Voodoo. I would have thought he'd given up the title Doctor after he wasn't Sorcerer Supreme anymore, but I I don't know. Whatever. It's not important. So then they come in to help, and they also bring the Wasp with them. The Wasp was one of the people that got frozen in stasis, like... Here's a spoiler, too. Wolverine here. They, they get caught in this blue aura, and they just can't move. The Wasp had been one of those people, but when Human Torch died... Um, she became unstuck, essentially. But given that Human Torch is in an ongoing series right now, somehow it's it's hard to... that he's really going to be dead. Uh, spoiler. Um, so this artist is Kim DeSento. DeSento? De, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce her name. <laughs> I, don't, I know it's a fairly common Hispanic name. I just... I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, it's funny because I, when the series began, I was ragging on the first artist, uh, Pepe Larraz, a little bit, uh, mostly because some of his faces looked weird, but, uh, as time went on, he started to grow on me, and the one thing I kept noticing between the two styles is that, uh, Pepe Larraz is much more dynamic, whereas this artist, Kim Jacinto, is, uh, much more flat, and sometimes her, um, proportions and anatomy just look, like, weird and off-putting. Like, look at Sunspot's really short legs there, for example. Um, so I felt like the art was a step back, and we're probably going to be stuck with this art for the next uh, four to five weeks or so. So that's, you know, it's whatever. I mean, it's still weekly, so you can't can't knock it for that. But um, anyway, there was this subplot introduced early on that they haven't really gone back to at all about Jarvis being in a coma because he got hit by some rocks or something and it turns out that there's more to it than him just simply getting hit in the head and they speculate in this really stupid um like pseudoscience 
uh, diatribe here that it has something to do with radiation or I, whatever. I don't know. It turns out it's not even right. So it, it's like I don't know as much about uh, molecular and chemical bonding as I should, but I know that everything that they say here makes no sense. Um, and whatever. It just ends up wasting pages. So Jarvis is still out for whatever reason. And then Rogue, every issue so far has been told from the perspective of one Avenger. So you have these third person, or yeah, first person narration boxes describing what the person is seeing, what the person is, is doing. And this one's all from Rogue's perspective. And I guess Rogue, when they split the X-Men and some of them went into the Avengers and they formed a team called the Uncanny Avengers, I guess she was the leader of that team. And that was the book that Jim Zub was on. Um, not the only book, obviously, but, uh, so some people have told me that, because when I, when I first noticed that Rogue was being looked to as a leader, I didn't understand it and thought it was dumb, but some people have told me that this makes perfect sense if I've been reading Uncanny Avengers, which I don't think I'm going to do that, but, but at least it, somebody, it makes sense to somebody. The death of Mighty Thor. Just kill her already. Why is she not dead? Just kill her. Jeez. Actually, 705. I might get this one just simply because of the art germ cover, if I can find that variant. But if I can't find that variant, I'm probably I'm not gonna care. Um, what else? I so yeah, that's the big points of this issue. Torch is dead. They're all really sad. Jarvis is still in a coma. Um, the magic characters have joined the fray. And the way that this ends is that Rogue gets really pissed off at the the Black Order, which I call the Hickman team. They're the characters that were introduced under Hickman's Avengers run. And so they go to fight those guys. And uh, Rogue goes up to Corvus Glaive, who is very powerful. Uh, he was the one that blew up Avengers Mansion early on in the series. And she just starts absorbing all of his power. And I don't give a crap. <laughs> uh, and you can see here that she's standing over the guy. And she's... Yeah, she looks like him now. Same eyes. Same weird stuff around his face. Uh, so it's... It, it doesn't tell us exactly what happens to her. But she's apparently... Uh, not really 100% rogue anymore. I'm pretty sure when you do this... She can also absorb memories. So we may finally get more answers about the plot... And then, it's kind of it. They go to, it ends with them being in Nevada, and we see some character, and we don't know to see who he is, and he's trapped in the rubble there with another character who we don't see who it is. This might be the real Hulk, might not be, I don't know. This advertisement would seem to suggest it's the Hulk, but I, I don't really know. Uh, um, oh, this series, it... Uh, it's still okay. It's still not awful. It's not terrible. It's not like mind blowing either. Um, and it, the fact that I could pick up the series, miss an issue, and not be lost at all. Like even I didn't. If I hadn't read the 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 blurb here at the beginning, I would have been fine. It just um, it's sort of annoying. <laughs> is all I'm saying. So, yeah, that's what happens. Once again, this series is just for people who are kind of interested in this because this is Marvel trying to go back to what the Avengers are supposed to be about, which is, uh, you know, Earth's Mightiest Heroes fighting bad guys instead of each other, um, big epic plots. This is supposed to be a return to form. The problem is that they're doing it by... Also making a lot of the same mistakes that Marvel's been making for at least the past five, maybe ten years. But tell me what you think of it. Like, comment, subscribe. In any case, this is Unranked Chevron signing off.